In 1900, as a part of the Paris Exposition that was held in Paris, France, um, there was government funding in which they were supporting the study of the American Negro for specifically an exhibit. And a man by the name of Calloway, who was working for the government, <laughs> approached W.E.B. Du Bois as a colleague. They both went to Fisk University together in Nashville. Calloway approached W.E.B. Du Bois just after he had completed his first book, The Philadelphia Negro, in 1899. Du Bois was a postdoc or a research fellow at UPenn but was never employed there. He then was employed at Atlanta University, which is a historically black college in Atlanta, where he headed up a group of sociology students, as well as other faculty that were engaging in this new science. Through his work on the Philadelphia Negro, W.E.B. Du Bois was able to employ not only the interviewing of communities, but also understanding how to blend the data with everyday life. What I mean by this is, for Du Bois, he not only visited the communities that he discussed in the Philadelphia Negro, he lived in that part of town. And as a black researcher, it was his interactions with those communities were a little bit different. And for him, he wanted to know the everyday, the inside about what was happening in Philadelphia. And so this was one of the reasons why Callaway, I believe, chose Du Bois as kind of the one to create this exhibit of the American Negro. And I say this because the exhibit itself was so jam-packed with information. There were books written by African Americans. There was art and sculpture written by African Americans. There was a series of photographs from historically black colleges all over the country that, well, actually mainly in the South, that um, showed black students in laboratories um, learning the art of seamstressing. Um, learning um, in education programs, in banking, in agriculture. And he wanted to show a side of African Americans that he knew that the European audience did not expect to see. This is 1900. This is less than 40 years out of slavery. Yet at the same time, there is a way that he wanted to show, even in the rural South, that was the center of the system of slavery. African Americans owned their own businesses. They owned their own houses. They purchased materials in which they decorated their homes. Their educational levels elevated. Actually, you can see the changes over time from 1865 on. And the beauty of the infographics is that for Du Bois, they were accessible to all, regardless of language, regardless of literacy. What you could do is you could see these beautiful modernist pictures, and then it draws you in to find out what is this picture about. And for him, it was not just the photographs that had that weighted importance to them to show, to physically show African Americans in all walks of life, but it also, these infographics were the data of everyday life. And for him, the fact that he was able to obtain all that data when at that moment, many white sociologists had not been able to engage urban black communities, let alone rural black communities. And so I think that the importance of the infographics is that they are a testament to the power and the ability of black researchers to not just study their own, but to ask very different questions, to understand and be able to see past race and stereotype to get at the heart of what African America looked like in 1900. And I think that that's the, the power of these 
these drawings. Um, also the fact that there were not just men who were students of Du Bois, there were also women. And I think that is important because women engaging with other women who are in school and they're in school, I could just imagine the kinds of interviews and collecting that data, but also how that made the people who were being interviewed feel because they would be part of this information and this very different picture that Europeans, as well as Americans visiting Paris at that time, would see African Americans in a very different light. Like, oh, I didn't realize all these details about how much, how, how far um, African Americans have come. So I think that that, to me, is the power of the infographics and the beauty of them at the same time.